Uh, the thing is, you know, I was speaking to some friends yesterday and I, I, all the details in her book, Over, Overcoming, uh, which came out a few years ago. And uh, when you read it, you get quite angry, actually, yeah. about what happened because it was basically Vicky being a bit nosy that has brought all of this to the fore. So can we kind of go through like what happened with Vicky Feeling? Because yeah. she was a huge advocate mm. for the cervical screening mm. programme, even though it has indeed Absolutely. failed her. But she certainly changed my whole attitude. I'm vi like vigilant about it yeah. now and that's and, because and, and I of Vicky too. Phelan. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Vicky Phelan went for um, her smear test back in 2011, like through the National Cervical Screening Programme, mm -hmm. like you and I and many other women watching the programme today do. She went for that smear test, uh, That the, the sample was taken, it was sent off to the lab. I mean, I would never know what lab or where my smear test result ever went to. Yep. Vicky's was sent off to the lab and the results came back. No abnormalities, all clear, you know, uh, go on about your day. We'll mm. see you in three years' time. Mm -hmm. That's usually kind of the protocol that you, would, you wouldn't go back for another smear for three years at that particular age bracket. Three years later, Vicky Feeling goes back for her next um, smear test in 2014. Again, that sample is sent off for review. It's sent off to the same lab, which is Clinical Pathology Laboratories in Austin, Texas. Yep. And a month later, Vicky Feeling gets the news to be told, you've cervical cancer. Now, what's protocol throughout the, the cervical screening audit is that once somebody is diagnosed or their, their sample comes up as, 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 um, as uh, abnormal, abnormal yep. or once they've been diagnosed with cervical cancer, there is in turn, there's always protocol that there's an internal audit as a result of that. Mm -hmm. That internal audit was carried out and it was found that the 2011, the initial smear test that Vicky Phelan went for, that result was actually incorrect. But what was re most remarkable about this was that she wasn't told about the inaccuracy until 2017, yep. at which point that cervical cancer had progressed to being mm. exceptionally serious. Yeah. It was a terminal diagnosis at that stage. Um, and the reason that we know about all this is that Vicky Phelan took a case, she sued for damages um, against CPL Laboratory, and that settlement was made in the High Court here in Dublin of 2.5 million euro. Mm -hmm. But the reason that we know about this, the, the only reason that we're talking about Vicky Phelan here today is because Vicky Phelan would not sign. When the piece of paper was put out in front of her and told, will you sign the, the, the non-disclosure, the confidentiality agreement, or the, the confidentiality agreement, she wouldn't do it. And we'll she give you more no. money. You'll, get, yeah. you'll get a higher settlement. Absolutely. Which, which, let's be honest, at yep. a time of exceptional difficulty for, for Vicky, for her family, and, and obviously her main concern, her two children, Amelia and Dara and her husband, and wanting to provide for them in the future. I'm sure, like, for, for any of us, I mean, I've yeah. been thinking about it myself in the last, you know, in the last day or so, that had to have been a very difficult decision mm -hmm. to make, but it wasn't for Vicky Phelan. Because no. from the very, very outset on her solicitor, uh, Keanu Carroll made that point yesterday. The one thing Vicky Phelan always said was that I will not sign a confidentiality agreement. So in April 2018, on the steps of the High Court here in Dublin, she told the world, yeah. she told the Irish people her story. She told us all what happened. As a result of that, many other women heard that story. They subsequently came forward. She thought it was about 10 people at the time. Yeah. We had the establishment of the 221 Plus group. Yeah. Uh, many other of, of those women have now, many other women have now gone on to, to settle uh, cases as well. Many other women have since passed away as a result of this. We've had the Scally report, the publication of that too, uh, back in 2019. That recommended sweeping changes right across the whole the whole cervical check screening because programme. Because of the negligence within the programme. Again, saying the that the programme, we are very lucky to have it in this country yeah. since its establishment, and I believe that. And again, Vicky Phelan, Ruth Marcy, Lindsay Bennett, they all, like it's so horrible to say these right. names, and they're all gone. Yeah. They all spoke about how important it is, yeah. but they just wanted transparency to yeah. be like, if something's wrong, tell us. And one of the things as well, I suppose, that, that Vicky very much wanted was, and, and, and we know this because throughout, you know, in the subsequent time and years after um, that High Court appearance, she continued to fight. And I think that's what, what has made Vicky Phelan mm -hmm. such a national treasure for people is that cancer is something, and Myrne, you and I know this you know, very well, it's something that affects every home in the country. Yep. Um, so Vicky Phelan is this heroine who has fought through a time of terminal illness um, when she was asked to sign this confidentiality agreement, she, she lifted the lid on one of the biggest medical controversies to ever hit this country. Mm -hmm. She is the result of major changes to a national cervical screening programme that will now benefit all mm -hmm. of the women of Ireland. And she did that at, at a time when she was extremely sick. Yeah. And she continued I... to fight and to fight and to fight. And I think that is what makes the whole nation 
mourn for Vicky yeah. Phelan and, yesterday. And it's one of those ones that, I don't want to say bittersweet, but she achieved so much yep. in Ireland, achieved so much for women, and yet, in her lifetime, did not see mandatory open disclosure, disclosure passed. Yeah. No. Had still huge problems with where these tests are being sent. Yep. Obviously yeah. not being sent abroad, not being processed in Ireland. So she achieved so much, but I think if she were able to talk to us this morning, would be saying the fight is not over, this needs to go further. No. Absolutely, and, and that's something that she, she continuously uh, talked about throughout all campaigning. I mean, she, she lent her support and her help to so many other, you know, women's groups as well, uh, organisations. I know yep. you were talking to Orlo O'Connor earlier as well today. But uh, look, I mean, we all knew that this this day was, was going to come. Vicky very much knew it. She was very pragmatic, actually, about that. And that was one of the things I, I remember very vividly in, in interviewing her um, quite recently. I remember one of the first conversations I had when I, I started the show with her two years Years ago was her now fighting for the dying with dignity bill mm. and yeah. that was something that she too was very very vocal about and again it all comes back to this the the concept of just women men people us the patients taking back control of the situation yeah. and and that's still you know that's still an, an ongoing discussion yeah. um it's been shelved somewhat at the moment but it's still an ongoing yeah. discussion and something mm. that she really campaigned for